I don't know about you, but I've seen three different tracks so far, but most of them are definitely going to the west of us. Looks like it's going to come right over New York City. Uh, we have a couple of different weather services. I've been able to hook up with uh, 41 North and Newport. They have that commander's weather service, which is a real great weather service where all the, the offshore boat is used, the, the, the uh, sailing guys and all that great weather, weather forecasting. They still have us in that corridor, like Ed said, 70 to 100 mile an hour winds. Okay, that's the corridor that we're currently going to be in. Uh, and it looks like it's going to be right off Long Island, New York. It, this one here, uh, commanders are saying around 8 p.m. Sunday, right off Long Island, so it won't be long here. Uh, forward speed's going to be around 24 miles an hour. All right, so, so it won't take long. So unlike the, the floods, it hit certain areas of route, and the rest of the city was fine. Uh, our experience with the last two hurricanes that we've been through, the whole city's a mess. You need to get the whole city opened up. Uh, I, I can remember some areas in uh, Governor Francis last time, four to five days without power. Okay, that's how long it took us to get through. You know, that cleanup from Hurricane Bob took us three months before we were cleaned up last time. Roads were open, but by the time all the debris was taken sure. care, it was three months. You know, we'll be doing some st staging areas afterwards. Once we get all the roads open, we won't be removing anything until everything's <coughs> open, power's restored. Then after that, it could be a week. We'll go into the cleanup. Right. Okay. Peter Ajiro is looking at that now as to what we would need people right. to sign right. to say that everything has been explained to me, and I'm choosing to stay in my own home. And, and, and you know, Mike, good good question. I mean, once again, when the storm is going on, we're going to have to make some value judgments. You you you, you can almost bet your bottom dollar that. We're going to have calls out there, no matter what we try to do to encourage people to evacuate, that I'm probably going to have to sit down with the chief and say, hey, you know, are we going to send people, are we going to put them at risk responding to a call out there from a citizen who all of a sudden decides, help, I need to get out. I mean, we have to face that possibility, those kind of calls are going to come in. I think some of the questions, Mayor, and you may be able to answer some of them, is that the they're coordinating the governor's executive order should there be a decision for the state to declare emergency and what that means. Uh, obviously, they're very concerned about Warwick, too, and we talked about the manning of the shelters. I, I told him that right now we have that as a priority on our pre-storm phase planning is to see if we can get either National Guard assets to man the shelters. Now, that may change. Sure. Uh, the only reason I say that is because I think the kinds of problems that we're going to be dealing with here on the police side, we've got this thing broken down into three phases. Obviously, uh, we may get tied up depending upon what I'm told by the EMA director. If we have to evacuate, obviously, I'm going to have to assist him with everything that's involved with the evacuation process. Now we're talking about when the storm actually hits. I want to have our people decentralized and prepositioned in the fire stations yes. so that, and I only want to respond to critical life-threatening emergencies out there. We know that they're going to have to move into that post-storm recovery phrase, which we all have a lot of experience on based on what happened less than 18 months ago. We're going to have to be prepared to deal with all the issues, and, and as Dave has rightly pointed out, uh, is Warwick Neck going to be cut off uh, from the rest of the city? Uh, what are the issues in Connecticut? What are the issues down in Oakland Beach, all these low, low areas, in addition to all the other problems that we're going to have to be dealing with? So that's going to tie up a lot of assets. I, I think we found out through experience, based on the flood, that we had so many things going on out there that we're reporting into our EOC that I don't think we did as good a job of tracking our own assets like this we should. Aaron Jetson is going to send a message out today directing people to our website and to the public service announcement <coughs> portion of the website so that we can be putting things up there um, and alerting them <coughs> as to what they need to be doing. Now, as people start calling to tell us that they don't have power. Um, um, I've got a list of contact numbers for you. We're going to do some outreach, too, with customers and start calling as we see which areas of the storm are hitting. So okay. we have a similar system. Municipal room open one. now? Is it, yeah, is the municipal room open already? We haven't opened our municipal room. We're going to, we're going to use Web EOC so everybody's got the same information okay. and then we'll open the, the meeting room once we know you know what the effect is. Because we're simply going to refer people who don't have power to you guys. Because, you oh, know, absolutely. Instead of 
I know at times we, we would call on behalf of people, we're going to give yeah. them the number and have them call you. The That's going to be a lot better. Be the rink's going to be uh, activated as a the pet shelter by the state right. uh, 3 p.m. tomorrow. And so that and makes us non operable for okay. that. And I'm expecting that the Department of Health is going to call today and tell us that we need to have the other rink ready to be more if we need it. Mm -hmm. So um, that will basically put both of them out. We will not be responding to individual calls from residents if their phone lines are still working. What we'll do is we'll systematically work through the city because our main priority is to get the roads open to get police, fire apparatus through. Uh, We'll have at Station 9, we're going to have one of our biggest loaders to make sure we get Tollgate Road open for the hospital, for not only our city, but any other city that has to get to that hospital. Uh, and that's basically what we'll do. We can't stop running around the city chasing, you know, Mrs. Smith's tree because she can't get out of the driveway. That's the way we're going to do it, and that's how I instruct my people when, you know, when this call starts. <coughs> the biggest problem we're going to encounter is a storm surge, uh, being on the east side of it. Our tide, our normal high tide for Sunday night at 810 is going to be 5.5, huge tide. We're usually around 4.3, okay? So, so what does that mean for us? You have a 5.5 tide already, that's very high. You're going to have a storm surge anywhere between 3 and 12 feet, somewhere in there. That's what they're talking. Uh, just to put things in perspective. The parking lot that they're stacking boats in now down at Oakland <clears throat> Beach at the boat ramp, that's at elevation eight. <laughs> so, you know, do the math, that could be underwater if we get, you know, a good storm surge on top of a five point five. Uh, can even get point would probably go underwater. So I, I, I think uh, we'll probably certainly need a meeting tomorrow, at least with police, fire, public works, the mayor. Uh, to start talking about maybe, you know, evacuations on Connecticut Point, but this is what's going to, if the track stays the same and this is what's going to happen, I think we're going to need to talk about that. Uh, transit vans and whatnot and uh, shelters. You're going to see on the DOC tomorrow, I guess? Yes. The Red Cross has informed us that they're going to use Vets High School as a shelter, a regional shelter for this area, so we need to make sure that, that you are prepared for us to be um, standing up a shelter there. Um, so. If you would let the superintendent know what's going on and the fact that we will be there, Pat will be the person coordinating that. I just spoke with her, Liz McDonald, the director, and she said they had a conference call this morning. I was not There's privy to that. Another one, I think, at 11. 11 10, she on. just said. 10, um, the Warwick and Coventry are opening. So they're going to open in Warwick and Coventry. So luckily, that'll take a little bit of the burden off, mm -hmm. off of us. Sure.